and welcome to Practical Balance. My name is Jen Westlake of Soya Lair, and I'd like to introduce you to my friend and co-host Janice Whiting of Lifted Spirits. Hey, Janice. Hello. How are and hello, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Well, I am good, and I hope all of our friends who are watching this show are doing well also. Uh, how are things going this week? Any exciting things? No, just fabulous. <laughs> I don't know. If, I have a road runner, runner that sleeps at night right by my back door oh, every wow. night. Every night. Well, he must Right be on the top shelf of my a little cactus rack <laughs> and a succulent rack, and he... Um, so, and so I put a little furry um, bedding up there and some Roadrunner food. And he, now he's there every night. Well, <laughs> so well, that's, he has it looks water like from a dog a bowl. Little friend. So he's, <laughs> I know, I know. And that has happened. That's how I got my other birds, you know. Yeah. They, they just uh, flew in and made themselves at home. So <laughs> that, that's how I get my critters, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, I think they just are able to feel your warm vibration and know that they're in a safe place. They're definitely safe. Yeah. And I think ha Annabelle happy and safe. That. It's a male, so I named him Oscar. His name is Oscar. <laughs> and every night he sleeps like a foot away from my back door. That's so I'm going to have to rearrange the angle of my camera so I can watch him <laughs> oh, that, do sounds that. Good. that sounds yeah. good and how, what's up in your world just keeping busy I'm getting ready for my new class that's coming out uh empower yourself so I'm really excited about that yay, yay. yeah it is going to be jam-packed with a lot of techniques tools explanations some role playing so we can practice what we're trying to accomplish and taking our power back with communication and, and relationships and all those kinds of things. So I've been really busy with that, but I'm really excited about that as well. So that's really good because as people learn the tools of how to master the game over spiritually, um, they're always wanting, to, those are words. We share words. And then when you take a workshop, you get to, practice those words exactly and, exactly um, and, uh, practice doesn't make perfect practice just makes you better at what you're doing exactly <laughs> so yeah I kind of teach in what I call a line upon line precept upon precept so the line is the information and the precept the precept is applying that information it's the application of that information so you learn one thing you do mm -hmm. it you learn another thing you do it you learn the next thing and you do it and then hopefully you'll gain some mastery when you learn that way well that's the simplest yin yang uh way to teach and so i've heard spirit say call it um potential learning is great potential mm -hmm. learning and then you do you actualize so you learn and you do potential actualization so um and they think it does not get any simpler than that dynamics um like breathing in and breathing out like in computers it, years ago but it still might be the basic of it is zeros and ones and and many times i've heard spirits say if you can't do simple you can't do complicated so um so as spiritualists, we try to simplify as much as we can without not giving the material. Exactly, exactly. And I'm thinking it's like, you know, why do complicated when you don't have to? <laughs> I think so too. Years ago when I was in computers and we, I took a programming class and I realized often with technology, they love to keep it complicated as a screening tool so that they feel smarter <laughs> and really I ended up taking a class from an instructor that says I'm gonna teach you something I'm gonna show you how simple this can be and he was the best instructor I mean he was just down to earth and taught it simply and so um, 
but yet somebody else could go to a professor in, a, in another class and they would be, um, they would over intellectualize it. And what I realized from that class is everything, if computers can be, <laughs> everything can be taught simply. Yeah. It's just the instructor's choice. Right, right. And I think, you know, it, you know, why do we want to make life more complicated? Because life is already hard enough. Thank heaven I'm not teaching computers. So. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you probably could do it simply, you know. So even, you know, um, mental dynamics, mental process can be very simple. And some, you know, sometimes someone don't doesn't know how to simplify it. And right. at least they're teaching. But really simple is best. Right. Well, and I find that living life the spiritual way does make my life more simple and easier, you know? Yeah. And it keeps my life problem free, which <laughs> is effortless. That's good. That's good. Hey, I want to let you know that we are starting to get some questions. Yay. I want to share the first question that we received from a woman named Dawn. And she is interested in knowing uh, her question is, when do you, when have you compromised too much towards your defects? Does that question make sense? Yeah. How, can, how much can you compromise that it be then a deficiency? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So here's Spirit's answer. Here's what I've had them known they teach me forever. They have said to me, Always negotiate, never compromise. Negotiating, when you leave an e event, a meeting, and two people have negotiated, they both can come out winners. Winners enough where they feel an empowered participant. And, um, and, and if it can't be negotiated, then you let it go. But uh, forever, as Spirit has said, um, never compromise because... Um, then you definitely are losing. You don't feel empowered. You don't feel like you are a participant. Um, and so, um, so as so, then part of her question is um, is to the to the deficiency. How do you even assess if it's a deficiency? Well, the answer to that is um, your gut. If you have compromised you will feel it in your gut. You'll often feel sickishness, a sticking, sickly feeling in your gut because the body is telling you um, what just happened wasn't for your highest good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't um, a, a, It wasn't authentic participating. It wasn't um, empowering. It wasn't, um, you came back with zero win. And I think many humans will say, well, this time I'll compromise, the next time I won't. Um, I think once you get the habit of compromising, it's a ball that just rolls and rolls and rolls. And mm -hmm. often in a relationship, a marriage, or with kids, or even with a boss, mm -hmm. when you're, once you started compromising, it just rolls <laughs> worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So Spirit thinks never compromise, always negotiate so that negotiate your marriage, negotiate your aspects of your job, even negotiate um, with your kids. Um, a lot of parenting might even say um, <clears throat> negotiating with your kids is giving them too much power. And spirit says, no, it's not. It is teaching them authentic negotiating, teaching them how to powerfully participate with the family. And um, um, that doesn't mean they're running the household. Mm -hmm. um, if the parent compromises, then they're running the household. Mm -hmm. So I'll, so there is not a situation that I've heard from spirit that can't be negotiated. Um, even I remember them saying that, you know, every day till the day you die, 
is an opportunity to negotiate a fabulously authentic life. Mm -hmm. So even two separate people in a union, whether it be two separate genders and or too large an age gap gap in ages or um, um, two separate histories, two separate everything. Mm -hmm. um, they still can sit non-emotionally and learn to negotiate that union. Mm -hmm. So um, so that is exactly how spirit thinks in mm -hmm. forever. And I can tell you I am not a compromiser. And never will be, mm -hmm. uh, but I, but I am going to negotiate a fabulous life every day that I'm on earth. Right, right. That's the best I can do. One of the things that I've observed when I've been, uh, you know, coaching both individuals and uh, couples is when you compromise, you actually are giving your own personal power away. And so it makes sense that you feel depleted um, and maybe a, a little uneasy and discouraged after you have compromised because in a way that has, you've given some of your own authenticity away, your own power away. And in the long run, it just ends up not being a healthy way to live because by the time you're done, you've compromised your whole self away. And I also, you can make yourself ill. Yes. You can compromise, compromise, compromise. And since the body mirrors the state of the soul, after a while, mm -hmm. your body often creates an illness. Exactly. Another thing is, is that when you're not being true to yourself, um, like you said, it can make you sick, but it can also build up a lot of resentment and anger. And those emotions can also make you feel unwell and fester in the body and cause, you know, um, other kinds of physical problems as well. So and I you like make bad decisions in that frame of mind. You know, people will make bad decisions yeah. in that frame of mind. True. Exactly, exactly. So, and, you know, I think when you do try to compromise, it means you also need to work on communicating uh, authentically, you know, speaking Absolutely. and, you know, ex you know, expressing what you want in, in an honest, kind manner. But a lot mm -hmm. of people have a hard time communicating and asking for what they need and asking for what they want. Well, I've also noted, like, say, when someone's dating, they all want to put their best foot forward and they want to create a, you know, enjoy that honeymoonish fabulous period of time and then later they realize the issues come up for things they've never communicated for example I've had people where uh, one of them decides they want a child and the other one doesn't and um, there really is no negotiating that you um, um, if that is a firm belief system that um, um, if you if one wants a child and the other one doesn't, if things are non-negotiable, mm -hmm. then um, often um, the union breaks up, whether it be um, even with a boss. If they want you to do something on the job, and I've experienced that in human type jobs where they ask you to do something that you know is totally um, inappropriate, um, um, that's... Um, it was non-negotiable. It was, right. and so I remember saying to him, um, "I am not then the empl employee that you need." And and he said, "I agree." <laughs> and we, and we <laughs> negotiated, and I was fine with it. And mm -hmm. then I said, "So I quit my job and walked out." And um, and often spirit rewards you for risking to be that authentic. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of days later, I was offered. Uh, another and better job. So um, living authentically is risking to negotiate, mm -hmm. speak your truth, follow your authentic self and heart. And then, um, um, but in the dynamics of 
negotiating versus compromising. I never compromised. It would make me ill immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can compromise kindly. You don't have to, you know, be uh, forceful or disrespectful about it. So negotiating. You mean negotiate? Yeah. 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 I mean, because yeah. people, I meant to negotiate. Sorry. So because right. like because when people try to communicate and they are negotiating or trying to set up a compromise, you know, or one's trying to get one to compromise mm -hmm. for something, mm -hmm. you know, um, the negotiation, you know, just always, you know, what you want to speak, you know, kindly and oh. ask what you need and, and, um, and just, and a kind no is just means just as no as much as a bold, angry no. Okay. Uh, you, a, a no is a no, mm -hmm. no matter what. Yeah, you can say no with confidence and when necessary, firmness. You just don't have to say no angry and all True. melodramatic, theatrical. In fact, one of the things Spirit <laughs> would like people to master is a peaceful sense of power, a peaceful sense of power. Because no... A soft no means as much as a. It means the same. Emphatic, angry no. It means the exact same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I hope that this information has helped answer Dawn's question. We thank you for your question, Dawn. And we wish you the very best in moving forward. And we want to thank all of you for coming to Practical Balance today. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or email them to hello at solulaire.com. And we thank you for joining us today on Practical Balance. Thanks, Janice. You're welcome. Blessings to you all. Thank you.